All right, well, now we are getting our electric motor put together, the sail drive. Got this from Thunderstruck Motors as a kit. So the motor, and then this is the uh, gear reduction, so two to one, which is recommended for, uh, so it's a similar RPM as what the Catalina had on it before for the propeller. Um, this is quite a bit smaller and quite a bit lighter than, uh, than this setup right here. So kind of wild that that does everything that this did. And then this is the battery pack that I finished earlier this morning. Uh, I was watching some videos and I'm gonna, I just ordered a second one. Uh, this one is set up with the BMS for a 63 amp max, uh, draw. So two of these will give me, you know, 126 amps at 48 volts, which is a, a significant amount of power to power this uh, AC motor. So this kit came with all the stuff. Um, there is some assembly required. I was just putting in the last bolt here. And this is kind of cool, you know, um, obviously I have the tools and, and whatnot to, to build this, but stainless steel is kind of hard to work with. Um, it's easy to mess up your tools with that and you know for the money I thought it was worth it to get all these components and just be done with it so um, so anyway yeah Thunderstruck Motors is where I got that um, it comes with this coupling which is nice um, key pretty much everything you need to connect it solenoid and the controller the heat sink so that's all that I'm gonna finish putting this together and uh, put the pulley on and the timing belt and then I'll I just measured this dimension so luckily I have my motor here I measured that uh, on the existing motor the distance from the center of the shaft um, to the motor mount the center of the shaft is actually three quarters of an inch above the motor mount so luckily I have this and I didn't move and I didn't move the, uh, the engine at all these mounts so I know exactly what the drop, or in this case, the rise needs to be to connect right to my propeller shaft. So hopefully once I get it out to the water, it'll be a direct drop in. I'll be able to drop this in and uh, these attach here, of course. Be able to drop this in and have it set, connect to my propeller. Okay, now, gotta make sure that uh, then we attach these brackets on in the right spot. And so since I have tools to do machining here, I can save myself probably some trouble uh, by just drilling the proper holes and installing these motor mounts exactly where they need to be for the pr proper rise on the uh, propeller shaft. So uh, what I've done here, I, knew, I know that uh, the rise is three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch above the engine mounts as they currently are on the boat. Uh, is where the shaft needs to be to line up with the propeller where it is right now. So uh, I measured this. Um, I know that the center line of here of this uh, this point, which is the center line of the of the shaft coming out of the transmission or the belt drive, um, is going to be um, two and one sixteenths from the bottom of here. So I measured that previously. Uh, so two and one sixteenths. That's where this line is right here. And I just marked it on here. I'm going to make another one on this side. Two and one sixteenths. Okay, now I'm drilling the uh, mounts for the boat here. Now, this is a just a pretty cheap bench drill press, but it seems to work pretty well. The key, of course, is uh, lots of lubricant when cutting stainless steel and a lower speed. Um, I wish it was a little bit lower, but that's as low as it goes. Of course, you could probably use this, but I don't feel like doing that. This is a lot easier to just throw something on quickly. All right, we're almost through. Remember just to use a lot of oil uh, when drilling stainless steel. When you get done, make sure you deburr the hole and get rid of the uh, 
Stainless steel is really sharp. Kitchen knives are often made of stainless steel and it seems to always, if I get cut, it's usually from stainless dust and barbs. So make sure you use something like this or some sandpaper. Save yourself potentially slicing your finger open on your boat. Okay, so most of this is done at this point. Um, I've got it all put together. Gotta to line these up for the belt. See here that the belt's gonna go on here. Um, that's critical the alignment. I also cut this out of Lexan. I'm gonna mount uh, these things right here to that. So this is that with the heat sink. I'm gonna put some bolts through it that have a standoff. I'll show you that in a second. Cut this with a notch. It'll go here. That'll bolt up. This will provide some additional support this way, like a brace to the, to the front engine mount. So I'll go ahead and fabricate that real quick and then show you how that all looks. Okay, this is what I've put together here. I'm trying to keep these cables close to the motor. Got this nice thick clear Lexan cover, which is kind of neat. Uh, throttle control. And I'm going to use the existing throttle cable. Or actually, this will be the, uh, I'll reuse the gear shifter cable because it says forward and reverse and it has the, uh, the right amount of movement to it. So hopefully this will fit. I'm a little worried it might be uh, maybe an inch too thick, in which case I'll rotate it and put it in front of the motor. So here it is. I measured everything. We should have our three quarter inch difference between the center line and here. It's dropped three quarter down. And then also the distance from this hole to, to here, I measured it on the existing motor. And that is the same as the distance from here to this second lug here. So, as long as I measured everything correctly and didn't make any dumb mistakes, uh, this should drop right in.